Hey all, and welcome back to the Crown Tundra in Pokemon Sword. We've been charged with essentially what is a holy quest. We gotta go about and figure out why people ain't liking the King of Bountiful Harvest anymore. Um, it's probably because he's not really granting them Bountiful Harvest anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Problem solved. Let's move on to the next playthrough. <laughs> it is a bit of a challenge. To bring this back to immediately what we just saw, that one shot made it so obvious that one of those old ladies is a recolor of the other old ladies. Like, I get that they're reusing assets and that's common in RPGs, but don't put the two characters next to each other. Come on. <laughs> oh, well, we go and see this right away, yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't actually come here until after I got the Reggie's. <laughs> I didn't even realise you could get go out of the, the gate of the town without seeing this. And yeah, here's Sonya. Uh, I believe in the, the Isle of Armour, Hop mentioned she's off somewhere cold, and there she is. Uh-huh. This cutscene triggers when you go out that way. If you go out of the town the other way, then you don't see this cutscene. And that's what I've just done, because I just saw, like, when I was getting that item around where all the Obama Snow were, that was the way out I saw. And so I just didn't think to come this way until quite a bit later. Which is fair enough. I mean, it, even though, you know, it gives you a sort of steer as to perhaps the direction you should go, it doesn't make it abundantly clear that in order to get an, a new cutscene, you have to go out this way. So you... It is very obvious because you did it of going out the other way and uh, eventually working your way back round to this and just going, oh, that's a thing. Now, you may have been wondering, is there a parallel to the Alolan Diglets that were in the Isle of Armour in the Crown Tundra? Yes, uh, the footsteps of the Swords of Justice are what we're going to be tracking here. Well, I say we, I mean... You, you can do it, because I ain't showing off that during this playthrough, okay? <laughs> oh, you lazy sod. The way these work is that there's the footprints around. Most of them are, like, there's more than the amount you need, thankfully, so it's not that annoying, like, if you just miss one, so you haven't got to worry about that. But they tend to be in set areas, like Kabalian's ones are near the, like, the snowy lake area, like the sea area. You got Verizian's ones uh, on the giant's bed where it's a grassland, and Tarakian's ones are on the lead up to the cave. So, like, they're not difficult to track down, and it's a neat idea in theory. In practice, it amounts to just wandering around Machinite. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I, I get what they were going for, but it's, you know, like, they it maybe doesn't have the same payoff. Because, like, the Diglets, it was kind of cool in the fact that. There's like just they're everywhere. Like there's a little tip off that you'll notice them as you're doing other things, and you know you can just every now and then go and redeem them for you a lowland Pokemon. Here it's not quite as satisfying, I don't think. And the funny thing is, you can actually get uh, Keldeo once you have uh, all three of said Swords of Justice. What you have to do is you'll go to the place with the big pink tree where the, the legendary bird uh, quest kicks off. Uh, if you go in the water around that little, like, islet, uh, there is a smaller, like, little place you can go on to, which seems empty, but it's not. If you go there, open up your uh, camping thing and cook a curry, he will pop out then. Yes. Yeah, I do really like that. that. See, that's the sort of cryptic stuff that I can't be mad at. Yeah, like, and, like, there is even a little bit of a hint there, in a way, in the fact that you do see one of the pots on the floor next to the tree on that island, which it doesn't quite tip you off as to what you're meant to do, but, like, if you hear through the grapevine that, oh, if you go camping with the legendaries in this in the particular spot, like, that just tells you that this is where you're meant to do it. Definitely. One thing to note, and it is an important note, because... Annoyingly, when I was, because obviously I'm a lazy bug, when I'm just like, yeah, just tell me how I get these things and I can go and do it. Um, what a lot of the guys didn't stipulate, um, which I will stipulate for you now, is in order for Keldeo to spawn, you need to have obviously caught the rest of the Sword of Justice, and you need to go and show all of them to Sonya. Once you have done that, then you can go and catch a Keldeo by going to the island and having the three swords of justice in your party, um, and then cooking the curry. That's how that works. He, he will not spawn 
if you do not show them to Sonia. Yeah, which admittedly I was doing that as I went along anyway, just because it's like a more methodical way of keeping track of what I've caught and what I haven't. But, you know, that is maybe one little oversight that people probably might not have clocked on to. Yeah, so I, I got a little bit annoyed when that happened because I was just like, I went to the island, did a m- absolutely stonking quarry, used up all my items, and then he didn't spawn. And I was just like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> well, I did everything exactly right. Was I not standing in the right spot? What is wrong? See, the funny thing about that is I enjoy degrading these legendary beasts that I've caught by playing with a cat toy with them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen all those shots and whatnot posts on Twitter and the like. So yeah, the mayor. Um, you know what you were saying about the two women models who look almost exactly the same? There's a, an, an exact copy of this model in the fucking town already. Why would you do that? Yeah, like... Laziness on that point. That, at that point, all it can be is laziness. See, the uh, thing is, I don't... I wouldn't necessarily put it down to laziness in the sense that you're gonna reuse models. That is just... It's, it's inevitable. The, the idea, though, if you're not going to work overly hard, which you shouldn't, you should work smart. But that's not working smart. Working smart would be to reuse the models, but keep them a fair distance away from each other so people don't immediately clock on, you know? Like, that is the working philosophy. And I, I do feel that sometimes people are a bit over the top with, like when you have to cherry pick things that look similar to another like to the extent of I've seen people bitching about our clouds model in 7 remake is just not just model but with a new textures like at that point you're just being petty but oh when... that is being majorly petty <laughs> yeah but like when the characters are put next to each other people will immediately notice that <laughs> that's the sort of stuff that you got to uh, like you it's completely fair to complain about that because that does take you out of it. That does ruin your immersion. You know, I'm kind of annoyed just uh, <laughs> going from one wild Pokemon battle to another while I'm trying to get away. So you know what? Fuck it. We'll fly, Buck. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're encountering wild Pokemon in the DLC where the main appeal is. Look at all these wild Pokemon wandering around this cool new area. <laughs> oh, well, what? I like how on the list of things that you can find in Freezington, it says Peddler and Inn. No shit they can't sell some t-shirts. You guys need an arcade or something. Yeah. And also, it's a very tiny inn for, like, one group of people. So, you're not going to get many tourists coming through because there's nowhere to freaking stay. Yeah, no, like, it's the one attraction in the tourist guide of oh there's a guy with a backpack he'll sell you some ultra balls come down guys <laughs> it's just like oh we've, we've got a statue of a thing that we don't really even know much about anymore come and have a look at it it's just like well, you're not going to get anybody to come with tourist attractions like that well, I mean this is why Stonehenge etc is uh, so popular. Well, actually, no, I think that just contradicts what you were just saying. <laughs> well, it's, there's a difference between having a like distinct impressive formation or something that someone's built versus it's a tiny little horse. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, there are statues in the Pokemon world that would draw in tourists. Like, I think the Dialgapalkia combo thing in Eterna City that's that's a cool set piece. Uh, that's the sort of thing that all the tourists would want a picture taken with. This is not so much, you know. Yeah, I think that that's the main thing. I mean, if you look at Stonehenge, obviously that is a tourist destination. However, you would go to the towns and stuff surrounding uh, Stonehenge, which would then have places to stay. So you'd have more options. Whereas here you have got one in. For one family, so to speak, and a tiny statue, which you just like, nope, that is not going to do it. I, I do like, uh, just to move on to actually what we're supposed to be discussing here, is um, the justification for the version exclusive legendary is the steed of the King of the Bountiful Harvest. They're, it's just legend. They're, they have no way of actually telling if it was option A or or option B. So they just give you both accounts and like you figure it out. 
Yeah, although it's not version exclusive, it's location exclusive. You know what I'm fucking talking about here. <laughs> but yes, I, I know exactly what you mean, and you're definitely right. I think this is one of the things that surprised me and was just really, really awesome, because they kept the horse a secret. Well, until it leaked on VP a couple of days beforehand, but for the most part. <laughs> but, like, normally in Pokemon advertising, they kind of shut this, like, here's the legendary, here's the special thing it does, look at how amazing it is. And while there might be, like, a couple of surprise legendaries, they've generally shown everything. I mean, they showed everything with Kubfu and Urshifu, so it was just like... You kind of expect them to do the same with Calyrex, but no, they did actually keep something back from um, releasing it to the public. And apart from the leak, but thankfully, you know, I didn't see that leak. So when I got to this, it was just like, oh, there's a there's a horse legendary. Oh, this is exciting. Um, and then the fact that, yeah, you get to choose which one. And to be honest, they're both pretty cool designs. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I mean, there's one that I prefer over the other, but that is not to say that they're not both cool designs, and it it's just an awesome instance of, yeah, plot-wise it makes sense of that, nobody knows, and then you get to pick. That, that That's basically what I said, but a lot longer and windier. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, it just sort of hammers home the point a little bit more. It's, it, like you, you find the you find the nail and you just hammer it down and keep yeah, hammering. Yeah, you're doing it again. Well done, Rick. You're yeah. such an English student, mate. But uh, yeah, we have a little bit of a lead to go on now. He needs his steed to get back to 100% power again because the king is nothing without his horse. And uh, I think we'll get a little bit of a choice as to which one we want to go after here. You'll notice that I uh, bought some carrot seeds earlier. This was for a reason. And if you didn't know that you needed to go get the carrots, which you can do pretty much as soon as you get to Freezington, um, then uh, you will either figure it out, oh, I need to do it after seeing the mayor's library shelf, um, his bookshelf, or you will basically get told, go get some carrot seeds now by Caddy Rex here. Thankfully, we've already gotten the carrot seeds, so he'll just be like, we need carrot seeds. Oh my god, you've already got them. That's amazing. Uh, keep an eye on his face, by the way. I love Cali Rex's expressions. They're amazing. Oh, it's coming. Do they grow carrots in this place? Um, it would be pretty hard, considering the state of the place. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh. It's amazing. Yes, you are very good with your ways of agriculture and whatnot. Please continue praising us, this feels good. Yeah, it's nice to have a legendary Pokemon that doesn't want to blow up the world for a change. Yeah, like, Calyrex is just really chill in the grand scheme of things. He's just like, yeah, so uh, you seem like an alright dude. Um, could you just, like, help us out a sec? Um, I'm having a bit of a nightmare here. Um, so here's the places that you have to plant in. You can either choose this one to get the ice horsey, or you can do here to get the ghost horsey. I believe in this one, in this playthrough, we're going to go for the spectral horse, because I got the ice wine shield. Fair play. I will say that I do actually like both of the horse designs quite a lot, and I, would, I don't think I could pick a favourite, honestly, like strictly speaking design-wise. Yeah, that is fair. I think I got more use out of the ice one, but that's just because I didn't have an ice type on my shield team. That is fair. I think I, I prefer the design of um, Spectria, which is the um, ghost one, rather than Glastria. But they do, I believe, both have their uses. So, obviously, I mean, we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. We haven't even seen the bloody horse. Um, but something that we will experience um, if you choose Spectria then you'll end up with um, with the highest base speed stat of all ghost type Pokemon but if you go for um, Glastria um, you will have the heaviest ice type Pokemon 
Um, so that is just pretty cool. And <gasps> Umbreon! Uh, it's probably my favourite evolution to do. I would say Espeon's mine, but Umbreon is very close in terms of his design. Uh, for more of this kind of talk, go watch the Health Icons play for a Pokemon Coliseum. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, is that my love of Espeon and Umbreon comes from <laughs> um, Coliseum, and I think that is why they will always be together my favourite um, evolutions. See, in XD you get to pick which of the evolutions you want, and I'm still not deciding which one. Like, we'll use Frowse, because we've used Espeon and Umbreon in Colosseum, so it's between the Kanto ones. So, which, ultimately, let's be honest, that means it's between Vaporeon and Jolteon. <laughs> I'm not using fucking Flareon. That is totally fair, because Flareon is easily the weakest evolution. Which is a shame, because I love its design. A medley of all Pokemon themes, imagine. I do like his, uh, little necklace. Uh, with the Triforce symbols on it and whatnot, so it's an English king with a little bit of a Japanese flair to it. Well, I mean, I suppose he's probably a little bit more of a Celtic king, considering, you know, this is sort of intended to be Scotland. Well, he's the king of Galar as a whole, so... And that is true. Um, also, you know, just because I, I haven't d done it too much yet, um, Calyrex... Um, Seems to most likely be a combination of Calyx, which is Latin for bud, and then Rex, which is the Latin for king. Um, which... Oh, this dance is ridiculous. <laughs> I saw people complaining about this. Granted, it was on fucking VP, so, you know. But it was like, oh, you complain about everything. Come on, you should know better than that. You can't have levity in a children's game! <laughs> it's not even that, it's just like... I love VP because I love watching people who will dig their heels in and just flip out at each other and like it's not discussion it's just name calling and that's why it's so funny to me. <laughs> Obviously it's not everyone there so calm down but uh, whatever. This is a very thin carrot compared to the chonker that you gave you get the ice one. It's true, but also this is probably closer to what an original carrot probably yes. looked like because actual carrot so carrots originally were purple. Now we just found a shiny carrot. So it works, right? <laughs> I need to relate everything back to video games or I won't understand it. Oh, I see. Mario, Mario, one up Mario. I get it. Well, for, for, for Flame, it's probably more Sonic, 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 Shadow, Bowser, Sonic. Speaking of Shadow, there he goes. Oh. Just an offhand. Uh, comment, Black Beauty is apparently on Disney Plus now. Uh. My beautiful ghost horsey, look at it go! All visible and tangible and whatnot for some reason. I know. Um, but yeah, so basically this is the reason why I say that I prefer Spectria over Glastria, is because I always tend to err towards the more elegant or kind of the Pokemon designs that you would classify as being beautiful, rather than the ones that are the angry, solid types. Um, it's it's just the way I go. I like the big fire dragon Pokemon. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, like, maybe the horse was running away because it was wondering why we were dancing at a fucking graveyard. Ahem. <laughs> uh -huh. There's that. Maybe he thought it was just a bit too cringe, so he refuses to accept his king's authority anymore, or just maybe it was off for a run. The, anyway, there's these pedestals all around the uh, Crown Tundra, and they basically tell a story about Calyrex. So this is how you get his backstory and whatnot. Here's a little bit about uh, Spectria, but there's very interesting stuff surrounding Eternatus as well. Um, and there's a little bit about how t to save like a forest and all its Pokemon and whatnot. A Calyrex at his full power, along with Spectria, moved the whole thing overnight. Like literally teleported the forest and all its inhabitants out of the way of a meteor. That meteor? Eternatus. Cool. I will say in terms of these little things laying around, there is also a gravestone down, way down south in the lowest area where you can find Spiritomb. And the way you do that 
is that you have to turn your online on and talk to, I believe it's 50 other people on the overworld, like other players that have kind of been around, which in itself is a throwback to how it worked in Diamond Pearl Platinum, oh. where you had to go into the underground and talk to, I think it was 32 in those games, like 32 people on the network who were in the underground. So it's needless busy work, but it's reminiscent of needless busy work they've made us do in the past <laughs> yeah so um it's not 50 it's 40 but it yeah it is that method which that kind of the years taken out of that a lot given it was much easier to get spirit to me in omega ruby alpha sapphire where it's just like open the menu in a certain place on the boat you know <laughs> yeah a little bit of a temple there uh, we'll save that for a couple of episodes from now yeah, see, that is one cool thing about the DLC, though, and the fact that you can do this out of order. If you wanted to just go in there and get rich still now, you can. Oh, yeah, like, we're just doing the Calyrex arc, if you will, just, like, back-to-back -back without stopping. But when I was playing through casually on uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., I did a little bit of the story, then I went off to catch some Reddies, did a little bit more, started the bird thing, did a little bit more, maybe I went and did, you know, some Dynamax adventures, and so on. So it was actually, like, a, a couple of hours to like three hours in when I beat the Calyrex storyline, which isn't a long thing, but I feel that it's paced a lot better than Cub Fu's story. Definitely. Um, even if, you know, you do just do it straight in a single chunk, um, it feels like it escalates at the right pace, um, so that then when you get to the conclusion, it's quite exciting. I suppose what I... what might have been a slightly better approach for them in terms of designing the whole thing would have been forcing you to go into that more, do a bit of Calyrex, go off and explore a bit more, come back to the Calyrex plot and do that. I feel like that might have um, maybe made the whole DLC a little bit more cohesive as a narrative package. But it's not it's not a major thing. I'm just saying that it might have sort of helped pull the other two um well the three strands in a little bit better, rather than just being side things outside of the thing that looks like the main plot. But it's not a problem because having that choice is also quite nice. I, I prefer the freedom to choose, honestly. Yeah, which is totally fair. I think it's just it's a personal preference on what you prefer to do and whether it would have worked better or not in a different fashion. Halt, bear! Oh my god. That killer horse hasn't got eyes. <laughs> and off he goes. Are you alright, clone of me? See, look, that's just the mayor's model there, without glasses and a different coloured jacket. Yeah. Whatever, I bitched about it enough. Ooh, it left it. Is that his dung? No. Oh, thank God. Nice. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but maybe it will help. Did you see my clone? And did you see my other clone oh, all the way in the back? Oh, for sake! <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, there's also an old lady over in that back corner who is also the same model as the other two. Can I take in the piss, Game Freak? Come on now. And I'm pretty sure that the old lady that lives in the house with the Cosmog has exactly the same model as well. Oh, that's a thing. There's just a random fucking Cosmog here. Yeah, well, that kind of ties into the whole Ultra Beast appearing in that now. It's like a preview that that's going to happen. Very true, yeah. What is quite cool is that after the fight with your horse of choice, you can go in and just get that Cosmog. Yeah, and the evolutions are version exclusive this time, similar to how they were in uh, Sun and Moon. So if you're in Sword, you can get Solgaleo. If you're in Shield, you get Lunala. Uh, sword chads keep on winning. All right, guys, we got a tuft of the hair of the horse now. And uh, I guess the flower comes next. We've got to get those reins of unity. So we'll see you next time where Calyrex's story concludes in the Crown Tundra.